I want to talk about the spring that is located in most climbing devices. And I don't want to single out any particular device. In fact, I'm going to talk mostly and demonstrate it with the zigzag because everybody seems to hate the zigzag anyway. But notice on this very top link, there's a spring right there. It's very small. It's inside. Um, it probably has a lot of rot activation before failure. And I suspect that the engineers figured that the, uh, the plates and the clutches and everything in there will wear out long before that spring ever does. But nonetheless, you really want to make sure that that spring is there, that it engages. There's nothing that has gotten inside uh, some pitch or anything like that that would disable that spring. It just seems like such a light and small thing that sometimes you might think that it's rather insignificant. But what I want to demonstrate is how important that is in the operation of most devices. Now, even your common friction hitch, if you think about it, it will have a spring in there as well. When we have a friction hitch, we want it to engage every time. And what we're counting on is there's enough tension inside of the cordage that someplace there's going to be a little bit of squeeze and a little bit of friction on that climbing line that it will cause that to engage. If the friction hitch is not tied properly, then you would be able to just slide it up and down the rope and it would never engage. And there's always a constant um, balance between having too much friction and making it difficult or creating drag on the ascent and not having enough tension in there or enough friction to cause that hitch to engage. So even on your common friction hitch, there really is some spring or spring action that you're counting on to make that engage. Take for example the rope runner too. It also has a spring that causes the engagement of the rest of the friction something to get all of the friction started. So what I'm going to do is I'll put the zigzag on the climbing line and I'll disable the spring and we'll see what happens. So you can see on the zigzag that this spring causes that top link to pull all of those and spread those links apart and create a tighter space for the rope to go through. If I push down on this spring, the zigzag will just go right down with it. And we count on that spring to engage the zigzag. Now if I were to take a fall and you're standing on a branch and all of a sudden that branch goes away, realize that when that happens, everything becomes weightless. Every part of this is matched in acceleration. It wouldn't matter if it was a feather or a bowling ball, the acceleration would be exactly the same until either a limb came along or the wind came along or something changed the acceleration would be identical. So, if all of these plates are squeezed together as I'm going up the rope, if it wasn't for something to happen, if I were to take a fall, there would be nothing to spread these plates, these links apart. They would stay just like that. And it would travel up and down the rope freely until something caused those links to start to spread apart and the device to engage. Okay, so now I have basically disabled that spring with just a little piece of tape. 
And if I'm going up the rope, or if I'm standing here, and the limb I'm on goes away, and all of a sudden myself and the zigzag become weightless, it just freely runs down the rope until it hits the tail and stops. Now it's interesting to note, when everything becomes weightless, there's nothing when this is weightless that makes it want to rotate, makes it want to turn. It wants to stay exactly where it is and just go down the rope. When I activate the spring, the spring simply gets it started. It's really not doing very much. It's a very light, very small spring, but it gets those links pulled apart so that the secondary and all of these other links can actually provide the friction. And the more pull that gets put on there, the more friction is provided until we start pushing links together. But it's that spring that gets everything started. So if you're climbing and something gets stuck in here and jams that spring together, or if you get sap in here that um, prevents that from getting started, you'll just slide down till you hit a knot or something. Now this will be a little bit of an interesting discussion too, but the unisender also has a spring. It's located in this plunger right here that pushes up on that bottom plate. Without that spring, those clutches would, st would stay together. The unisender would, would drop. But what we're counting on is having some tension here, and whenever this is held in place, that plunger pushes the bottom clutch and engages the rest of the clutches and the unisender. Now, I put this drum on, and there is some debate that the drum puts a little extra weight, it puts two ounces of weight on top of that top clutch that facilitates the unisender sliding down a little more. And I don't, I don't dispute that, but what I have found interesting is that once again when we look at what happens if you all of a sudden become weightless, if if I become weightless, the unisender becomes weightless, everything becomes weightless, we are basically floating in space. It's almost, I'm not sure what was thought of, but when you think about it, in order to push these clutches up to engage it, it counts on me standing on something or being in a fixed place it counts on it counts on this lower lever being in a fixed position if all of a sudden everything becomes weightless that opens up and the spring is basically worthless you'll notice on the rope runner that even though it's weightless that spring causes the rope runner to put an, a bend in the rope and cause the rest of the friction to engage. It doesn't matter. It doesn't count on gravity. This could be floating in space, and when it's in floating in space, that will come around and it'll put a bend in the rope and implement the friction required to operate the device. So let me look at the zigzag again. And even though all of these clutches are uh, compressed, if this becomes weightless, that spring doesn't depend on any pressure from any other part. It's going to automatically put a bend in the rope, and when it puts a bend in the rope, it provides the friction.
to start the rest of the clutches to uh, spread apart and provide the friction for the device. So regardless of gravity, and this is the point, regardless of gravity, because again, with gravity, all of these parts will accelerate at exactly the same speed. So regardless of gravity, this spring will cause a bend in the rope. Once that bend is applied to the rope, then the rest of the clutches can engage and provide the friction for the device.